The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Hello, everyone. Let's see if we can um, pop us up on the screen for the greeting. Hello. Hello. Hi. Well, and welcome to the 2016 self-assessment uh, training for staff. Um, as I mentioned in the all-staff meeting, this uh, webinar will be recorded for your viewing convenience later. Um, I'm Beth Stover, as you all know. I'm here with Paulette McCurian. Greg Zunke. And we are going to really do a very, very brief, hopefully, training. Oh, and our, I'm sorry, our driver. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Um, this will hopefully be a very, very brief training because um, most of you are familiar with the process. You've participated in the process before. In fact, I think I am actually the person who's uh, newest, most new to the process. Um, and I'm, I'm the training me I'm the um, in doing the self-assessment. And so, and Craig, as you know, will be here to discuss COPA access. Um, so let us uh, begin and if you have a question just type it in and we'll get to those at the end and um, great we'll take it away with the PowerPoint. Jennifer? This is the self-assessment training 2016 for grantee staff, you all, Parent Policy Council, we did that yesterday and the Chicago Committee on Urban Opportunity who will be watching this webinar at a later date. As you all know, the self-assessment is required by Head Start performance standards, and it's also mentioned in the Head Start Act of 2007. Um, the standard tells us that at least once each program year, with the consultation and participation of the policy groups and, as appropriate, other community members, grantee and delegate agencies must conduct a self-assessment of their effectiveness and progress in meeting program goals and objectives and in implementing federal regulations. And so that is what we will be doing in the coming weeks, measuring our accomplishments, our strengths, weaknesses, i.e. challenges, and uh, program enhancements. And we will, out of that, um, we'll, there'll be the interviewing uh, sessions, there'll be the uh, document review sessions, there'll be debriefing, and out of that we will be since synthesizing the information that we get from these interviews and the document reviews here at 1615 West Chicago Avenue in addition to the self-assessment that have been done by the delegate agencies on COPA and we'll be synthesizing that information to create a report that will be submitted with the grant application on September 1st and an improvement plan for the coming year. So um, the role of the Policy Council and the Board is very important especially in the Head Start Act of 2007 um, not only will they be participating in the self-assessment, but they approve the final documents. Parents have volunteered to be part of the interview process and the document review um, process, and so we should be seeing them in the next few weeks when we go through the monitoring tool and uh, the self-assessment process. Um, so in cr getting the process ready, We've specified a time schedule that's going to be um, at the end of this presentation, uh, the time schedule. Uh, we've selected team members, so Paulette, Elaine, and I are sort of the main uh, self-assessors here. We've reached out to some of the other divisions for some assistance um, and some objectivity. Uh, Julia Talbot from Policy, who does all the department's RFPs and other assorted tasks, will be joining us. Darlene Perez from Fiscal Audits, who some of you may recall um, once lived in, in Head Start, Early Head Start all the time, so she's a great resource. And Darlene Jones-Lewis, who is my uh, colleague, former colleague from the Grants Unit, who is going to be working on the Start Grant from now on. Um, she'll be um, participating as well. So especially for Darlene, I think Darlene Jones-Lewis, this is going to be a great learning opportunity. And so um, that, that's great that they're uh, helping out there. And like I said, um, members of the CPPC will be joining us for the interview process as well. So um, everybody needs training 
Um, and then we go into the process and we do interviews and we do document reviews and then we do the briefing. I sort of I will be writing up kind of the summarizing what happens in those meetings and then um, synthesizing some of that, analyzing it and sharing findings and from that developing and implementing an action plan which will include goals and objectives for the coming year that address findings. And of course every delegate agency has one. Um, uh, an improvement, self-assessment and improvement plan, and we will have one that is grantee-wide. Okay. And here we have the timeline. So um, this is a pretty uh, a long process. We did a delegate agency self-assessment training um, on February 26th at the King Center. WKU uh, provided that training for us. Then the delegate agencies did their self-assessments from February 26th to April 15th, which was the due date on COPA. Um, April 15th, delegate agency assessment due date on COPA. Um, at that point, we will we review the self-assessment results. I think some of you all have gone in and figured out where that is, and Craig is going to be here to tell us a little bit more about accessing the COPA delegate agency self-assessments. So then we had CPPC, so, uh, the Policy Council of Self-Assessment Training, just the other day on May 25th. I'm sorry, what? On May 25th? 2013. Oh! <laughs> wow, flashback. All right, <laughs> 2016. Um, don't be confused by that 2013 there. Um, then the CCUO, we're going to maybe be participating today, but it turns out that they'll be participating at a later date in the training, um, staff training today for you all on the 27th. And then on the 1st through the 16th, we'll be actually conducting the self-assessment, the interviews, the documentation review and the like. And then, next, next slide. Then uh, we slash I will be drafting the grantee self-assessment <laughs> report and improvement plan with input from everyone and from parents and board members. Um, and then that final plan will have to be approved by the Policy Council and it will also have to be approved by the board, the Chicago Committee on Urban Opportunity, who functions as our board. And then it gets submitted with the base grant application on September 1st. So um, we use the monitoring protocol to conduct the self-assessment. So there, are, just as with the coming up federal review, there are those five areas, environmental health and safety, comprehensive services and school readiness, or SIA, leadership, government, management systems, and fiscal integrity. And so those will be the five areas we'll be looking at. And um, we'll be pulling the questions out of the monitoring tools, especially using the HISCI, that short guide, as our template for those. The self-assessment is a data-driven process and it provides us the opportunity to look at the program for consistent data messages from across all areas of operations. So in addition to the interviewing process, there'll be a, like a document review and some of the documents that will be included in that review will be the PIR, outcome data, enrollment and attendance data, staff qualification data and the like, and we'll be looking at um, those data points to highlight our strengths, our challenges, and try to set goals and objectives to address areas where we find challenges or weaknesses. So this is really um, the thing to keep in mind is this is looking at what we do here at 1615 and trying to understand uh, what our strengths and challenges are which is often monitoring and, and this overview and the collection of data and the like and figuring out what processes we can put in place here that may address some of our um, shortcomings. Okay. Um, with the end result, of course, of um, goal of supporting and implementing quality services for children and families and looking again it's just sort of repeating some of the things that we do here, which our focus is on, is like ensuring that there's shared governance systems, ensuring that program plans are in place, other planning materials are done in a timely fashion, that everyone's being communicated with, that our record keeping and reporting is timely and accurate, that ongoing monitoring is taking place on a regular basis and is being followed up on, 
to human resources are being managed and that our fiscal house is in order and controls are in order to ensure that federal dollars are being um, deployed in the most effective manner. Um, so again, uh, we'll be looking at us, the grantee, to see how we implement comprehensive services to prevent health problems for children, to track um, child health needs, developmental needs, to make sure that every child is receiving an individualized uh, program that meets their particular needs, um, that those children who are in need of uh, 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 an IEP or specialized services because of a suspected disability are receiving that, uh, receiving them to ensure that parents and, and governing bodies are participating in the um, creation and implementation of the school readiness goals and, uh, that and, program pro goals. and program goals and uh, that parents can be involved in all aspects of the Head Start program. Okay. Um, Oh, and also that uh, families have the opportunity to take an active role in community planning and advocacy, that our approach to Ursia meets the needs of Head Start and early Head Start families and is responsive to the community needs assessment, and that we ensure that facilities, materials, equipment, transportation are supportive of learning, timely, reflect different ages and stages of development. Paulette? Nothing? Okay. No, no, I just wanted to add here, um, we're also looking at how the, the um, that, that was the end? No. <laughs> Go ahead. We're also looking at how, um, what the agencies have done, their individual self-assessments um, that have been uploaded into COPA, um, in, in, mm. in, in, and what how they have assessed their programs and how we are going to respond to um, a citywide how whatever findings that we ha have found in their self-assessment and incorporate them into what Beth will be doing <laughs> <laughs> into what Beth will be doing when she writes this up. Um, so w once <laughs> once once um, you have participated in the self-assessment process here, the next step when we're looking at documentation and, and we're looking at all those things, we'll be incorporating not only what the grantee does here, but also what the agencies have done and what they say their shortcomings are or their strengths are, and, and we um, base our program goals and, and um, objectives on, on those as well. Okay, moving on. Right, and so uh, this, I think, summarizes what Paulette just uh, sort of said, how we'll be writing it up and synthesizing, writing things up, and then um, coming up with short and long-term goals, creating an improvement plan, and submitting it for approval. It also informs the training and technical assistance plan that gets also gets submitted with the grant application. So this, I believe, is the uh, form that is used to write up the self-assessment um, results, the findings. Um, so you have an area, and we, it gets connected to the standards. There's a finding. Um, for instance, in this case, the finding was, I suppose, that the program was not ensuring that the children had an ongoing source of health care. There was weaknesses in mm -hmm. ensuring that all children um, had a medical home. So in response to that finding, um, as part of the improvement plan, tasks and activities are determined, time frames are set, responsible steps are um, identified, resources that can be used, documentation that goes with the resources, and then there's a status completion update. And so I, I guess that is something then Maybe, Paulette, you can speak to this since I'm new, what happens with this plan once it kind of goes out into the ether. It doesn't go into the ether. It goes to HHS. <laughs> and, and they do um, review it. Um, they request it with the grant. Um, we actually should be, we should be tracking the status um, to ensure that we have, um, oh, <laughs> to ensure that we have addressed those issues that we have identified um, 
And um, as you, you saw there where it says what the, what the finding was, well, one of the things that we are going to have to do here as well is look at how what we found fit into the, um, and what we plan to do fit into the program goals overall and, and, and have them fit across the board going forward. Right, and, and I guess just to speak to that briefly, I'm not sure um, how familiar everybody is with the new five-year grant application and five-year grant term that's been inaugurated since the implementation of the designation renewal system, DRS. But one of the things that happens is that there's more of a formal five-year goals and objectives that have to be identified in the grant application, and then they have to have SMART goals um, with them. SMART objectives. SMART objectives, measurable, timely, the like, specific. And we have to report on those then over the course of those five years. And that actually gets tied back into the monitoring protocol for um, program governance, leadership, and management systems where they actually look and see, well, you said that this was your goal and objective, and you said you were going to hit this, um, this uh, 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 target uh, by such and such a date, and then they'll, the federal reviewers will be coming in and looking and seeing if, in fact, we did hit that target. And if we didn't hit that target, this is something that I think they're kind of working out in the implementation of this new system. But is noncompliance? Does that become a deficiency? Where does that sit, where is that situated on that spectrum of findings from noncompliance, easily correctable to um, deficiency that can that can lead to recompetition of the grant application. So it becomes very important that the um, that the improvement plan is synced up with the goals and objectives, and um, and we try to make that work. And so I think this is something that's going to be shared across the board, really. Right. And and, and you, as some of you know already, also the, the department has some goals, overall goals that they're working on, and division right. goals. So these all need to be t to be um, aligned. Right. Mm -hmm. So our uh, goals and objectives will be aligned with the strategic priorities that are being implemented division-wide, which is also part of the new mission statement and the like that they've created. Mm -hmm. So, OK, uh, next slide. I think uh, now we're going into the schedule. So I believe that your supervisor or managers have probably sent you out um, scheduling information, but this is the overview. Um, there's five areas. Uh, we'll do environment. Well, we're taking them in the order that I believe they're going to be implemented. Environmental health and safety is where we start. Comprehensive services is not, um, I, that's split up to mornings and afternoons um, to try to, because uh, that's a big chunk, right? Um, so health and family community partnerships in the morning on those days and comprehensive services, school readiness and disabilities in the afternoon, followed by RCIA, uh, leadership government management systems, and fiscal integrity. So um, I guess we'll be seeing you all at some of those uh, events. Yeah, hopefully uh, you participate as you've done in the past. We look yeah. forward to your input So um, because it's meant that we get a broad basis of input from all staff. In the same way that the delegates have to include their staff, we are including our staff um, in the process as well. So we look forward to seeing you there and bring your, bring your, your expertise and yeah, your, yeah. your um, talent with, with you. Uh, uh, um, one more thing I wanted to say. Um, you saw earlier it says it's data driven. Um, a lot of this depends on the data that you already know about, that you collect. There's the PIR. You look at the PIR. Some of you look at the child outcomes data. Um, the, all the, all the, the, the various um, data that you look at, uh, um, because they're also looking at how we are able to measure what we do, how effective we are at what we do that what we say we do, <laughs> OK? So remember that as you are preparing for your areas. Okay. And this, uh, so um, now, the PowerPoint, I think, will be available on, does that get made available, Jennifer, with the webinar? Um, um, 
Not usually. Usually well, on YouTube okay. or something. Yeah, the webinar is usually on on the YouTube link. But okay. I think it'll can just be sent out together to them. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll have Victor distribute or somebody distribute yeah. a copy of the PowerPoint yeah. if you like. And now Craig is going to tell us about accessing the self-assessment on COPA. Get into COPA. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. There's COPA. Oh, you got to over there. Okay. Well, By this point, as you notice, you saw the list of the deadlines. You notice that agencies were supposed to have already uh, submitted their own self-assessment, so that process should have been completed at the agency level and entered into COPA uh, by now. So the place to put that is under the monitoring tab. And if you go under the monitoring tab, and everybody has this, I checked. So you go under site monitoring. I don't know why it defaults to my tab. That's not useful. It just tells you what you didn't do, what you said you were going to do last year. <laughs> Beyond that now. So this is here. It's the, the site monitoring uh, tab, and it's got a list of everybody that's in there that you have access to anyway. So under agencies, you pick somebody. Let's see what it looks like. Come with mom. It's usually pretty good. I don't want to pick on somebody and embarrass me. I bet Northwestern's better. What do you think? Yes, probably. Yeah. Okay. 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 Kind of. Yeah. So here we have there the because the self assessment is so long and there's so many standards as, as you're well aware, this has actually been broken up into seven tools in COPA. So we're reporting under uh, the Garcia, Child Development and Education, Child Health and Safety, Family Community Engagement, Fiscal Integrity, Management Systems, and Program Governance. So the reason this is a good opportunity. You see the one that is not green? Yeah. It's a duplicate, and that's yeah. because it, the, the tool, the visit, as they call it, got started twice in COPA and couldn't, couldn't be deleted. So they have a fiscal integrity in there and it's fine. And so I'm going to get rid of this right now. But the, the, I'm glad that that's here because that shows you this. When it's a blue link, this is what it looks like when it hasn't been completed yet. So if any, any of the agencies haven't done all of their uh, self-assessment tools, when you look in here, you'll see it still looks like this. But when they've marked it as complete, uh, it's green like this, and you can't get at it through a link anymore. You can view what their self-assessment findings were by clicking the children's services next to it, and then opening the tool. So it looks like this. And then you can see each section there. there uh, organized either by performance standard or by section of the act. Uh, and then for each area, the agency has marked themselves as compliant or not compliant. Now this one is almost too good. Too perfect. Yeah. Now, there's only this one component area of finding. Uh, they haven't put much information. They're not they're under enrolled. They're under enrolled. That's, That's the only issue. Say. So, uh, and they're also supposed to say what documents they looked at. Um, in order to determine whether they're in, in compliance or Kaya. not. Here. So all here right. is Albany Park. Um, I want to go into what, what's in here, but, but uh, you'll notice that they found non-compliant areas, uh, some of them under fiscal, some of them under RCA, and so uh, Looking at this, then it, it will identify which areas uh, and what's going on with those. Mm. So, so far, we've identified uh, their, their governance area here. This is community assessment was not updated, and that's put in here. Uh, they do not have an action plan identified, which they may have submitted or uploaded some other way this year. They're supposed to have an action plan in there. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so here, Child Care Society here, they have found uh, areas of non-compliance and uh, put action plans in place. So okay. the museum status is in progress, ongoing. Uh, verify complete, this means that there was a physical environment issue, they put a plan in, addressed it, went back in, and, and so, so this is what it would look like if it was, if they really did the self-assessment well. So the verified they, complete means that somebody uh, else has come out and verified that no, that happened? No, so they used to be an in-progress. They were working item. on it. Right. And then they addressed the, 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 the plan said something like, we're going to fix the gate at yeah. Hyde Park. And then they fixed it, and they went back in, and they said, uh, we fixed the date it. on this date, and then if you look in there, we can even talk about see what it says. Yeah. But again, you want to see? Yeah, let's. Why not? Okay, so this is what that looks like. See? <coughs> We're just medication boxes. Uh -huh. So they put it in. They needed medication boxes. Uh, gave a due date of 429. As they completed it as of 415, right. they put it in there and marked it All right. That's complete. So that's Great. just how the action plan works. If you look at uh, an area that has more than one finding in it, like, mm -hmm. like this one, then when you click through the children's services, you'll see that the first screen is you will have the non-compliance indicators. Ooh, another community assessment not, not conducted. Yeah. Screening uh -huh. and assistance we're, needed. We're, so this is the kind of, this is why they do it. They do it agency by agency, but when we're compiling this to look at these for our self-assessment, if we've got, we've already looked at two agencies and seen two people say, mm. your community assessment mm. is completed. If that, if that's already a pattern, we have several more, and then one of our, one of our items would be, we need a better system to do community assessment, community assessment uh, in conjunction with the agencies, because several of them said they did get updated. So. Or monitor mm -hmm. or that's why give them a due date we, that helps. That's why we do this yeah. the way we do it. The agencies right. have done it first, their findings should be in there. Right. So we can compile them and see patterns and then comment as an overview on the system based on the data that we've gotten from from the agency right. um, and determine what our what our first factors should be. Yep. Great. All right. Yeah. Makes sense everybody? Yeah. Can we do one thing? Can we see what, how did they determine that they're out of compliance or in compliance? Um, for which? For anyone. Yeah. Do they, are they filling out the documents to review? Okay. So, sometimes. Yeah. Like here's the items and then, uh, 130440 you know, for pregnant women nursing home visits pregnant you know so there there uh, we didn't have a specific tool that required everybody to use I know in the distant past there was a prism tool and, mm -hmm. and everybody used the same piece but that didn't actually those were more uh, Federal monitoring visits, federal review forms. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't actually address all of the performance standards we needed to cover. Mm -hmm. We just did the ones that would be reviewed, and then we kind of used the self-assessment as a review before the review. So what we've done in this form is pretty bare bones. We've just lined up all of the program standards that should be assessed. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have guidelines in some of these? Yes, some of them do. So here's the guidelines. For uh, question 16, question 16 which is 13 and 420, program supports children's healthy development by screening children and making referrals as needed. So, in filling this out, if they don't know what that question is, they can click on the guideline, and usually there's a brief description taken from the performance standards, and then they can answer the, answer the question. Also, if you're looking at it and they've just put, this one is pretty thoroughly filled out, but some of them are just just, and just don't stay compliant. Yeah. Then, um, right. not and and, and in, in as you these in the, as you look at these in the future, you might want to tell your agencies. Um, uh, I looked at your self assessment, and you don't say what how you determined that you were out of compliance or you were in compliance because I don't see any evidence that you looked at. Mm -hmm. 
or, or what you use to determine that. So that's one area that you could be assisting them in the future. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, are there any questions? Do you, or did you have another comment about the COPA? Let me see. No questions? No, we don't have questions. All right. Let's wait a minute, maybe this side thinking. All right, we'll give you a second. I don't know. I think this piece is pretty straightforward. Okay. If you guys have any questions about it, uh, we'll be around, but it's not that. Oh, Once stop you, by and talk to Beth. Would <laughs> you poke around in here a little bit? You should be able to see, to see yeah. you know. Uh, and one thing, one reason that I would like everybody to look at it, even if on a cursory inspection they haven't found any issues, is that uh, starting next week when we get together to do uh, roundtables in terms of uh, closing out our monitoring for the year, it's important to notice either if they said everything was all right, but our monitoring found problems, or the other way around, we monitored and found them fine, but in their internal uh, self-assessment, they found they found issues. Yeah. Either way, we could uh, probably need to bring that to the table when we do the round table and have a dialogue about mm -hmm. making sure we're on the same page about the problem. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I guess a link will be sent out for the YouTube, or how does that work, Jennifer? Yeah, uh, we'll send the, I'll upload it, send it to a picture and tell them right. the YouTube. Great. Oh, are we back up? Okay. Thank you. Well, everybody, have an enjoyable afternoon, and um, enjoy your holiday weekend. Thank you. <laughs>